Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center in London. So today we look at a slightly different topic with one of the best trials which has been done in recent times. The question to be asked is, does micronized progesterone prevent a miscarriage? And this was published in just very recently and it gives you a critical evaluation into what is the role of progesterone in early pregnancy and early pregnancy loss. So, and this is probably one of the finest trials done and, I, and believe me, it takes a huge amount of effort to be able to conduct a trial of this magnitude. So there was a critical evaluation looking at the randomized evidence. The, so let's go back to and see what progesterone does. And progesterone is necessary for maintenance of pregnancy. If you withdraw progesterone, miscarriages occur. The American Obzangani Society said that for threatened pregnancy loss, the use of progesterogens is controversial and conclusive evidence is lacking. True trials were conducted to generate robust evidence in the role of progesterone to prevent miscarriage and increase live birth. And what was the two trials? In these two trials, one was called the PROMISE trial, which is progesterone in recurrent miscarriage, and PRISM trial, which is progesterone in spontaneous miscarriage. So what did the PROMISE trial look at? Again, by the same, led by the same author, uh, that's Ari Kumar Swami. And what did he look at? He looked at, uh, the entire team looked at women with unexplained recurrent miscarriage, more than three, or consecutive miscarriages trying to conceive naturally. So 400 milligram of micronized progesterone was given vaginally twice daily, no later than six weeks until 12 weeks of pregnancy. And this was compared with the placebo. And the primary outcome was live birth rate after 24 weeks, 836 patients, and from 35 hospitals and probably a very well robustly conducted trial uh, in all possible ways. So what did it find out? It found out that live birth rate in the progesterone group was 66% and the placebo group was 33% which was not significant. The story doesn't end there. So what did they do? They did a subgroup analysis and they looked at women with three miscarriages or more than four miscarriages. And so, so whenever you do a subgroup analysis, the best way to be able to understand whether it is a true, you know, true reflection is that it should be replicated in another subgroup analysis or, or another analysis. So when you look at the PROMISE trial, and you, you see that in those who've had, if the number of miscarriages were significantly more than three or four, then progesterone did have a significant impact. The higher the number of miscarriages beyond three and progesterone therapy did seem to decrease the risk of miscarriage. So that's where again, I, I think we're getting, getting some information that probably progesterone may, may be helpful. You get to three and I don't think it makes a difference. You get to four, five, six, and then adding progesterone may lower the risk of miscarriage. The PRISM trial was different and the PRISM trial was, it was a well-powered randomized controlled trial with women with threatened miscarriage. So it was double blind, allocation, concealment and excellent follow-up. So progesterone group had a live birth rate of 75% and placebo group had a live birth rate of 72%. So if you have a look at it, women with vaginal bleeding during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, 400 micro, uh, milligram micronized progesterone vaginally, twice daily until 16 weeks of gestation compared to placebo, 4,153 patients in 48 hospitals in the United Kingdom. So again, when you have a look at it, if a woman had not had previous miscarriages, progesterone did not have any effect. So when you did a subgroup analysis and when women had more than three miscarriages and came with bleeding in early pregnancy, adding progesterone made a difference. Three to four miscarriages, the, odds, the rate of risk was 1.28%. 
Again, with previous miscarriages and miscarriages more than three, if the woman came with bleeding, then adding progesterone seemed to decrease the miscarriage rate and continue the ongoing pregnancy rate. So what do we know? 50% of miscarriages are due to numeric chromosomal abnormalities. Trisomy is the commonest, polypoidy, monosomy, and these aneuploidic miscarriages occur on a random basis. Euploid miscarriages are more frequent with increasing number of miscarriages. The, the other thing which you see is that as miscarriages, and this is a very important slide because it, it, is, it, it gives you just that bit of information that as miscarriages increase, the aneuploidy rate continues to be the same. But what increases is euploid pregnancy start increasing to miscarry. So what does it mean? And it, so if you look at my earlier study with you know recurrent pregnancy loss and PGTA, you're more likely to get a euploid embryo. But why do these euploid embryos miscarry them? And that is the problem happening with re repeated miscarriages that there's a pr as pregnancies uh, uh, as number of miscarriages start increasing, you're more likely to also miscarry a euploid embryo. So we come to that, that question which has troubled almost everyone for the last 60 to 70 years, something known as a luteal phase defect. And so what do we know is we know that progesterone is, it is often given for luteal phase defects. And maybe if one of the causes uh, or reasons of euploid miscarriages uh, was a progesterone defect, then correcting it may. What do we think? We think that probably, you know, if you have uh, a euploid embryo, a euploid embryo or a euploid miscarriage, maybe there, there is another link which we could be a luteal phase defect. So. In, in another study, 616 women were evaluated in the middle luteal phase. They took an endometrial biopsy with immunohistological staining for nucleus saccharine expression. And what they find out is that if you added progesterone in, uh, and increased the dose, and then if you corrected the elevated saccharine levels, then probably the, the, the group where you treated the uh, with progesterone, you saw a better live birth rate. And if you increase the dose, now that is very much a histological uh, examination. So, so, so what happens with recurrent miscarriages in women with early pregnancy bleeding, a history with, and whom do you target it really? You know, uh, uh, if you target it, you target women with recurrent miscarriages, you target women with early pregnancy bleeding with the history of miscarriages and the increased risk of future miscarriages tends to increase. So if you look at the slide, if there's no miscarriage, then probably the risk of miscarriage is about 11%. But by the time you have six or seven miscarriages, the risk of miscarriage increases to 63.9%. So there's a prog with every miscarriage, the risk of having another miscarriage starts increasing. And that slide gives you a much clearer idea into what's happening. So for example, for four previous miscarriages, 20 studies were looked at, and there was almost a 39% chance that there'll be another miscarriage. And also it's important to realize that the the role of genetics here is random and is not and in fact remains steady and what it means is that in re re repeated pregnancy loss we have to keep looking for causative factors which are other than aneuploidy. So the question comes in which progesterone can we be used so what is the trials looked at these trials both used vaginal micronized progesterone. So they were natural progesterones that derived from soya beans and Mex Mexican yam roots. And it has an identical structure to physiological progesterone synthesized by humans. And the question gets asked is what if you use dihydrogestone and 17-hydroxyprogesterone? They have got a 
a different molecular structure and pharmacokinetics and they were not part of the study. So it's, uh, it is not possible to comment on their efficacy in this case. So another question comes up is, is what is the clinical application of this extremely important uh, study? And in fact, two important studies. And they found a small but positive treatment effect dependent on the number of miscarriages. It does not seem to help in women who have not miscarried previously and, and in the first pregnancy start bleeding. And they may be beneficial in women who have bleeding in pregnancy, in early pregnancy and had previous miscarriages. And so you know, often what would this be? I think rather than giving you know, huge hope I think we are probably getting a step closer and I think there should be a shared discussion where you uh, tell your patients, well, this is what studies say and maybe uh, giving an intervention with progesterone with in your case where there has been repeated miscarriage may be helpful. And what is the dose you would start on and maybe 400 milligram BD twice a day starting from bleeding and continuing till about 16 weeks of gestation. And this may have resulted in a significantly high number of babies in the UK. So combine many of these studies and it seems that in recurrent miscarriages, there is a role of progesterone when the miscarriage numbers tend to rise. And finally, what did this both these trials tell us? That the risk of congenital abnormalities in the short term did not increase and even long term. So, Progesterone seems to be safe. And I think it's this is one of the two, one of the two studies which needs to be publicized and needs to be sent across and maybe needs to be conducted in different centers and looking at your own population because it is a very important study and probably one of the best studies done, which may give us an answer. Why? Because. In almost 50% of cases, we are losing euploid embryos and we don't know what will help. So again, progesterone administration, a micronized progesterone administration, if there's a history of previous repeated miscarriages, may be useful. If you like this talk, please share it and let us try and spread evidence-based medicine to as many places as possible. Thank you very much.